So, uh, first, I'll tell you a little bit about the university. Okay. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. So, this is the largest private university in Hungary. Okay. It's Budapest Metropolitan University, and uh, its uh, operation is in Hungary only. Okay. But it has several key partners all over the world. Okay. Uh. when i say key partners it means that uh, you know we have a international exchange program with over 200 universities all over the world okay now uh, if you all have opened the uh, international prospectus on page number 4 you can see the courses that are being offered can you guys see the courses hello we are opening it Yep. So basically we have like four main programs that in which we offer courses arts communication and social sciences business and tourism okay the university is currently offering 23 programs in ba and ma which and they are all taught in english okay hello yeah yes yes we are listening okay okay so uh, like uh, the last thing i told you is that we are offering 23 ba and ma programs and they are completely taught in english and along with our own programs we are also offering one conventry university program okay so this program like uh, if you choose to study at bmu which is budapest metropolitan university you can also choose to do a one year course of conventry university which is based in uk and it is one of the top uh, 4% of the highest ranking universities in the world okay our uh, the benefit of doing this uh, conventry university program is that you will be able to become a bachelor's or international business while studying here in one year it's a 3 year course and you know if you choose to do it here in bmu you can get the degree in one year along with your own course so for example you're doing a bba from bmu okay and you choose to study conventry program so what you need to do is that you need to have 120 credits okay and you can choose to enter this program so in 4 years like 3 years of bmu program and one year of conventry program after four years of completion you will get two degrees instead of one and uh, the total time uh, of doing them separately is six years and in four years you will be able to get two degrees so uh, the requirements are mentioned in the international prospectus uh, the for, the most important is that you need to have 120 credits to opt for this program and you even need to have a IELTS exam uh, with minimum six point five score, okay, and it's also in English, okay. Then we have some preparatory programs, okay. These programs are for those students who wish to change their uh, field of study, okay. For example, a student from an arts background wants to study a uh, business administration and management program, okay. Then. uh he has to do a professional foundation semester for business programs if he wants to uh it's a one semester program okay and uh, if he doesn't want to do that you know he has to clear uh, the university interview along with a maths test because for uh, management programs maths is basic requirement so similarly we have you know a english language preparatory program as well as a pre masters program for all the master courses okay so this usually we offer to the students who wants to change their field but uh, are not really sure whether they'll be able to adjust in their 
new course or not okay then on page number uh, 15 you can see that there are several scholarships available for students okay all these uh, scholarships are you know uh, given once the student is here okay they are all based upon their academic performances here at the university they are eligible for a full scholarship as well based upon their academic results okay then uh, you know like i told you on page number 16 you can see that you know there are almost 150 partner universities from 38 countries where the students under the erasmus program can choose to go for an exchange semester okay for erasmus they need to have some eligibility okay but uh, the best thing is that uh, if the students choose erasmus program they are also given a scholarship of around uh, 400 to 500 euros per month okay and it's for the duration of the semester they'll be getting the scholarship so what happens in erasmus is uh, like you choose to go to a different country at a different university but uh, uh, the semester will be completely related to your field of study okay and the fee that you have to pay for that semester is that university fee and not the budapest metropolitan university fee okay and plus uh, you'll be getting a scholarship of 400 to 500 euros for your accommodation and your daily expenses okay so moving forward um, on page number 18 you can see there's an uh, you know application procedure mentioned uh, in the brochure so the application procedure is actually very easy okay all you have to do is you have to create a student profile and upload all the necessary documents on the link provided by us okay once the student profile is created and all the documents are uploaded a doc all the documents will be checked here and once uh, there is an approval on the documents the student will be shortlisted for an interview okay so uh, the interview is uh, on skype and a university official is going to be taking the interview so it is the most important uh, you know uh, thing that uh, as the university does not require ielts so they judge the english over the skype interview what have what has to be kept in mind during the interview is that the interview is being taken by a professor from the who's from the course that the student has selected to study at the university why is this uh, i'll come to it uh, so the interview is divided into three parts okay the first part is the introduction part where the professor is going to you know judge uh, the english of the student he's going to ask about student's background uh, why he chose to study at metu like uh, how did he find about it so stuff like that uh, which is going to you know uh, help him to understand after that what is the level of english of the student then uh, if uh, the student is able to you know satisfy the uh, professor uh, he'll move on to the second stage where the professor is going to ask some questions about the course that the student wants to study at the university so in this uh, the professor will ask uh, some questions about the course uh, not uh, very difficult questions but uh, something like uh, why the student uh, wants to study this course uh, what is his interest that you know made him choose this course and uh, like if a student uh, wants to study msc in marketing for example then uh, the professor might give him a you know a question where the student has to think for a couple of minutes and then come up with a solution so things like that this will uh, help the professor to understand you know that what is the level of current level of knowledge of the student and uh, how much you know work has he put into his uh, bachelor's or you know uh, previous studies before joining a university 
if uh, the professor feels that yeah the student is good enough for the course he is going to move on to the third stage okay and the third stage is also one of the most important uh, this uh, student will be asked about the country that is hungary okay like uh, because uh, when a student is planning to leave their home country and you know coming to a new country and start a new life uh, we think that he should be prepared you know uh, like he should have the basic knowledge about how to cope up with the changes in the new country so these are very basic questions that are asked during the third stage but a student needs to do their research so there can be questions like what is the capital of hungary uh, what is the most common language in hungary or you know what is the currency of hungary questions like that so once the interview is finished and uh, the professor thinks that yeah he's good for he's good to come uh, we issue a conditional letter okay this conditional letter would contain all the necessary details like what the student needs to do further it will have uh, the fee structure like how much fees they have to submit uh, plus uh, you know uh, like what he needs to collect for the visa uh all the things and once the fee is paid they will get a final offer letter acceptance letter along with it and uh, those are the things that you need to have before going to the embassy and uh, recently uh, the embassy we got a message from the embassy that you know they are also going to have their own uh, interview session and a match test for all the students who choose to go to hungary it it doesn't have to do anything with our university it's for the whole hung all hungarian universities so you know like uh, what we offer is we offer visa assistance fee for the students okay so it's it's a service that we offer uh, uh, like uh, this uh, visa assistance the thing is that you know students uh, once they apply for the visa you know uh, first they need to take an appointment with the uh, embassy and they need to prepare for the visa interview so what the university has done is they have uh, on retainership they have kept a lawyer with uh, within the premises to whom the student is going to send all the documents which he is going to take to the embassy for student visa the lawyer is going to you know uh, see uh, check all the documents and verify whether everything is okay or do they need some more documents and once uh, he verifies all the documents he is going to help the student to obtain an appointment for submission of uh, the documents with the embassy plus he is going to prepare the students with a mock interview uh, for the uh, embassy interview okay and now as they have uh, another test we are going to you know uh, send them few uh, questions which they need to prepare before the final visa interview okay so this is how the process goes on page number 19 you can see uh, an application process in detail and what are the minimum requirements so as you see that for ba ma uh, and msc programs uh, there is uh, you know example of ielts given but that is not a requirement okay it's just an example that this is the minimum band they should be able to achieve everything is totally judged on the interview of the students uh, plus there are deadlines uh, so currently there is an early bird offer going on uh, so the students uh, for september intake who will apply before 30th of may they are eligible for a 10% discount on their first year tuition fee okay and the last date of application for non eu students is uh, 15th of july okay plus uh, these are the additional fees that i was talking about uh, these are the old fees these are not correct so application fee is 120 euros health insurance fees is 150 euros per semester and the visa assistance fee is 100 euros so health insurance fee is actually uh, refundable if the student is denied the visa 
along with the fees, but uh, the application fee is non refundable. So uh, on page number 20, uh, you can see some practical information related to health insurance, DOMS, and cost of living. So let's talk about cost of living and DOMS, OK? Health insurance, I already told you that it's 150 euros per semester. So there are, uh, let's talk about DOMS now. So for student accommodation, uh, like I would say, uh, Budapest is not very expensive. The student education is cheap, and uh, there are few dorms uh, with whom the university has a partnership, and they are very close to the university, and uh, they are not costing above uh, 350 euros per month for students. Uh, as uh, we come to cost of living, uh, you can see uh, the local transport is very cheap for the uh, students, okay? It's around 12 euros for a month. And uh, students are eligible to buy this pass, and uh, this pass is applicable to all the local transport, whether it's a bus, a tram, or a metro. And even on weekdays, uh, students can use the ferry as well. There, because there is a river in uh, Budapest, and... You know, students can go on ferry tours as well for free. Uh, as you can see, dining in a restaurant is also very cheap as compared to other European nations. It's around 6 to 15 euros for one whole meal. Okay. Uh, then uh, on page number 21, you can see like uh, it's an example of a dorm. Okay. And this is how the dorms usually look like uh, around the university. Okay. On page number 22, you can see that, uh, you know, university is having uh, strategic partnerships with so many other companies. And, uh, you know, these companies usually uh, uh, send their requirements to the career center in the university. So I'm going to tell you about the career center as well. Uh, so uh, during uh, the study, students are basically allowed to work for 20 hours per week legally. Okay. It's uh, like uh, still they hold a student status. They can work anywhere in Hungary uh, for 20 hours per week. And once their course is over and they lose the student status, like once after they obtain their degree, they are allowed to work for 40 hours full time per week. So uh, in order to help the student, there is a career center in the university. Okay. This career center, what the student has to do is he has to take an appointment with the officials of the career center. And uh, once he goes there, uh, he he's like the career center is going to help the student to design their CV according to the Hungarian style. And once their CV is designed, the career center will have the student profile and will start sending them offers in Hungary on their student email. So what, the last thing that the student has to do is, you know, open the job offer sent by the career center to them, uh, read the job description and apply for the jobs according to their understanding, you know, like according to their own job profile. And once a student gets a job offer, you know, they can start to work and uh, based upon their job contract, they can extend their visas. Okay. Uh, in order to find a job, uh, student, students will get a nine months post-study permit. And it's a work permit as well, so they are allowed to work as well during, you know, their search for jobs. Plus, uh, you know, during their studies, uh, they have opportunities like uh, Erasmus uh, and the one, there's another paid internship in USA. It has recently started and uh, once the students are here, they can, uh, you know, find, uh, they can get more information about the same. And uh, along with all these things, there is a free of charge language course. Okay. So at the university, there are around 12 languages that are being taught for free. A student is allowed to choose one language which they can learn for free. So most of the students are choosing German or French, but uh, I've seen like Indian students, uh, they are, uh, some of them has also chosen Hungarian as their learning language. 
the last thing like i want to conclude the training by saying is that you know we are looking for quality students students who can you know become part of our alumni uh, because the university is investing too much on building a new alumni network uh they are not into uh, the uh, university officials do not believe in rankings or accreditations so they have spent a huge amount on their faculty and currently in uh, the business programs we, uh, the faculty uh, there's a new faculty which are having 250 years plus combined work experience so please Uh, you know i would say i would request you to find quality students for the university otherwise if they are not able to even clear the interview at the embassy the visa will be rejected but if there are they are good students and they do understand like uh, you know what level of education are they opting for uh, i'm sure they're going to do wonders okay uh, so for the visa uh, process uh, i would say uh the students first uh, they, they have to clear the interview with the university officials okay once they clear the interview they'll be given a conditional acceptance okay uh so during the uh, conditional acceptance letter uh, the student will know about uh, all the fees that they have to transfer and once all the fee is transferred they will get a final acceptance of a letter so after receiving that letter they have to start collecting all their visa documents okay for that we have provided visa uh, the fee is supposed to be paid yearly okay so for example for a bsc in business and administration uh, management it's 2375 euros per semester okay and uh, once the fee is paid and uh, the final offer is received by the students he will uh, send all the embassy documents to us okay and we will provide visa assistance where we verify all the documents and guide the student uh, that what is missing and so uh, like uh, once the lawyer you know actually approves all the documents he the student can go to the embassy for the visa uh about the requirement of percentage so there is no uh, minimum uh, percentage requirement like i said a student a quality student you know i don't judge on the basis of percentage but on the basis of their knowledge so there is no minimum percentage that is required for bachelor or master programs but uh, you know all c's and d's would you know it doesn't look like if a student is only obtaining c's and d's on their report cards he's a quality student so you know he i'm not saying that it should be all a's but a student uh, i like i requested you that please you know quality student means a lot to the university uh visa assistance is not a mandatory thing okay uh, this is raminder yeah so visa assistance is not a mandatory thing but uh, i suggest you know uh, that uh, students take this uh, visa assistance because you know we prepare them for a mock interview and a maths test uh, earlier these interviews were not a big deal but uh, recently we learned that you know these are going to be in detail and uh, they are going to last for around half an hour 40 minutes so a student has to be prepared for the same yeah it's it's highly recommended during the session you mentioned about math and english test for the embassy could you please put some light on it uh so uh, there is no english test at the embassy uh, but uh, recently we learned that there is going to be a math test for students who are opting for management courses or other courses that are going to have some uh, maths uh, subjects in the course itself okay and uh, the english test is only for uh, like there's an interview 
English interview for the students in order to get the admission in the university. There is no English test unless, you know, the professor feels that if the student is not able to, you know, like he's not very confident over Skype and uh, his English can be judged over an English test, only then there is a test. Otherwise, there is no English test as such. And maths test takes place by the university. Uh, like uh, a university is only going to ask a student to give a math test right after the interview when they are trying to change their field of study. Like uh, you, if you guys remember, I gave you an, an example that if a student is from arts background, like he was studying humanities in class 12, but he wants to do a BBA course at the university. So in times like these, they have to clear the maths exam and it takes place right after the interview. Uh, Navneet, uh, there is no distance education at the university. And uh, how much the student needs to show besides paying tuition fee? Uh, so they have to show uh, around 6,000 euros for one year uh, beside the tuition fee. They are basically their living expenses. So around 500 euros per month. Uh, they'll have uh, the embassy is going to ask them to submit around the past six months of the bank statement and uh, please make sure and uh, please explain to the students that you know this 6,000 euro amount should not have been you know uh, in their uh, like it should not be a one month old and everything came just to show the embassy so it should also uh, you know, look like that they had the money for long. Minimum can be six months old, right? Yeah, it has to be six months old. Okay, and we would also like to know uh, if open schooling and correspondence studies are accepted for admission. Like if a student is coming for a bachelor program in any field and he has completed his bachelor, uh, class 12 from National Institute of Open Learning and IOS. So will it be considered? Uh, he will be considered, of course. Why not? Thank you. And uh, about a postal, do we only need the highest degree certificate? Uh, so uh, we need all the education documents actually. No. And the amount is 6,000 euros for one year. That you have to show apart from the education fees. Uh, remember I said ki jitne bhi education documents hai, wo upload karne zaruri hai. I never said that they have to be notarized. Okay, Sukrit, uh, this is Raminder here. Yeah. Uh, yes, actually, I am getting a bit confused here. I, I got your point that, you know, that all the documents needs to be uploaded. That is absolutely OK. But yeah. with regards to getting the same apostle, I read it on the website, like uh, on the embassy website, probably that the highest degree needs to be apostle, uh, which would mean that we have to get it done from the Ministry of External Affairs in India. So my query was that, is it that it is only the highest degree or do I need to get the mark sheets or the 10th or 12th certificates as well? See, the thing is, uh, if the embassy is saying so, then you have to do what the embassy is asking you. I can only tell you about the university that the university does not require any documents to be notarized unless the university mm -hmm. says so. Okay. So this means that from the admission point of view, you don't need any notarized or apostolization of the documentation. But Absolutely. from the visa point of view, if the embassy says it is required, then obviously it is required, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, but uh, you won't be able to confirm us on that, that what would be the visa requirement as such for Hungary. Can you just help us with that? Because we need a little clarity on it. Okay, I, I can get back to you on the same, but Absolutely. not right now. But no, no, uh, by no, the no. end of the day, you'll have this information. No issues. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Or any doubts? I think they are still typing the questions. Uh, we will take five more minutes. Sure, sure, sure. Okay.
uh, only uh, the family, the first family. So we are uh, mother, father, brother, grandfather. Only these people can sponsor the student. Otherwise, the embassy is not going to accept. What is the maximum age to apply for admission uh, in bachelor and master programs? Uh, so bachelors, I would suggest uh, that, uh, you know, not more than 20. And for masters, uh, like if it's an MBA course, I think uh, till 33, 34 students are accepted. But for MSc and MA programs, I think uh, 28 can be the maximum age. Thank you. And uh, about the loan. Uh, so the thing is, uh, you know, and at the embassy, usually I uh, notice that students who, uh, you know, submit documents which show that they have taken a loan, usually they do not get the student visa. So, you know, they can obviously take a education loan, but uh, I've seen so many cases where this uh, visa is rejected only due to the fact that you know they didn't have the money and they took a loan. So, uh, like maths test conducted by the university is uh, not for all the students. It's only for the students who you know uh, are trying to enter a course which has maths as a subject, but uh, they have not given a maths exam during their you know 12th or during their bachelors and uh, the math test by the embassy is for all the students okay but it's not a difficult test it's only to judge uh, you know whether they uh, know the basics of maths or not and uh, i would suggest that you know you attach the itr of the sponsor because you know it uh, uh, like, I don't think that it's going to be a reason to get a visa rejection. But uh, when the embassy official sees that, you know, you have attached the ITR, your chances of getting the visa increases. So I think, you know, that you need to show the ITRs of the sponsor as well. And uh, I think past uh, three years ITR would be enough. Uh, so at the embassy, the math test is generally right after the interview as well. But I'll get back to you on this as well. I will uh, tell you the details about the math tests conducted by both, you know, uh, the university as well as the embassy. Because this information I got today morning only that, you know, the embassy is going to start having a longer interview sessions and a math test for all the students. Uh, no, uh, so at the embassy, the interview is going to be in English. Uh, there is no, uh, you know, like a person who already knows Hungarian and uh, is a, has gone to the embassy for the interview. It doesn't really matter that they are going to get the visa if they know Hungarian or not. Okay, so the interview uh, the embassy is going to be completely in English and uh, it really doesn't matter whether you know Hungarian or not. You just need to clear the visa interview and the match test at the embassy. And I can share, yeah, uh, I'll share some sample question papers for the university test as well. See, uh, on the ITR as well, I'll get back to you because, you know, I have never seen anybody who has not filed you know, like who has not attached the ITR with all the uh, financial documents for the visa purposes. No, 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 no. It's uh, totally up to the student that if, you know, they want to learn Hungarian or not. Uh, like, it's of course, it is recommended because, you know, you're coming to a country where the official language is Hungarian and uh, almost everybody speaks hungarian but uh, even if you do not know hungarian uh, it's still manageable 
but it's recommended that you know they learn the basic level in india itself uh no it will not impact the visa decision so uh, like if all the documents are correct and uh, it's a good student like it's a quality student and he has cleared all the interviews and the tests uh, they are surely to get a visa uh it's high the visa success rate is high in general but uh, you know uh, i've seen that there are so many students who are not from a good background or you know who are just uh, applying to visa just to come to enter europe so they usually do not get the visa and uh, the job search visa after the completion of studies is for 9 months and during these 9 months uh, students are you know allowed to work full time that is 40 hours per week like if the student thinks that you know uh, of course they can reappeal uh, but uh, usually if all the documents are correct you know and uh, they have taken the visa assistance from the university they usually get the visa it's like once uh like one in uh, one out of 100 you know that they will get a negative decision uh but uh, you know if by chance a student gets a negative decision and they want to reappeal i would suggest that you discuss it with the university officials first because they will need new documents from the university uh, in their appeal okay so if visa is delayed you know student will get time like uh, till whenever whatever time they get the visa they can come and join the classes and they can opt for extra classes during the course okay uh, i'll be sharing all the questions you know uh, mock visa question and the university interview questions will be with all of you uh, of course they can sponsor themselves but uh, if they are able to show the expenses they can you know like if they have an itr for example if a, a, there's a child who wants to study mba and he's been working for past 3 years so i'm sure that you know he can uh, take care of all the fees himself so what he needs to show is his past 6 months statement uh the minimum expenses and his itr you know then he can of course sponsor himself as well uh so uh, like uh usually the classes start during mid of september you know and as you can see that uh the last date of application is 15th of july so by 15th of july usually every student has already you know uh approach the embassy for visa process and usually uh, it's a bit longer process so by 15th of september you usually get the visa you know and let's say if they do not get the visa by that date you know they can uh, join a little late and uh, even if it's one month like they can come if they want and join and they can opt for extra classes for the class the course classes that they have missed and uh, yes there are two intakes but not for all programs okay uh, they can choose their intake according to you know grant of visa as well uh, so the health insurance fees is 300 euros per year okay and uh, it's uh, refundable if the student does not get the visa okay it's uh, like they have to pay it semester wise it's 150 euros per semester and in health insurance like uh, everything is covered student uh, need not be spending uh, 
any money on medicine or you know any uh, con doctor consultation yeah uh, the uh, health insurance has to be paid to the university and university will take care of any everything uh it's usually like when you get the conditional letter you know uh, it has all the pieces mentioned in the letter and uh, it has uh, the uh, health insurance fees also so of course it's before visa application Okay, so uh, let's talk about the conventry program. Uh, con it's uh, it's a joint program actually. Mm, so, for example, a student who chooses to study a BBA, which is a BSc in Business Administration and Management, it's a seven semester course. Okay, they can choose that. You know, uh, like if they opt for conventry program within one year of studies like they'll be starting their bba course at metu uh, at bmu once they finish that course at bmu or uh, once they earn 120 credits which is like two years of study they can start studying the conventry program it's designed in such a way that you know the first two years that you've studied at bmu are going to correspond exactly to the program at Conventry University. So you have to study one year of Conventry program courses, okay? And once you finish that course, uh, like one year of study, you are eligible to obtain a degree from Conventry University. And later, after finishing the Conventry program, if you choose to complete your BSc in Business Administration and Management, so after one and a half year of the rest of the study that is left after completion of that will get a second degree okay so within a span of four and a half years you are going to get two degrees which usually would take you around seven years to obtain you know that's the conventional program and uh, it's uh, actually offered in two uh, you know two courses one is uh, one is international business and the other is inter international hospitality. So for tourism also, it's available. Mm, yeah. Yes, the application fees uh, uh, is, uh, yeah, uh, after the conditional acceptance, the application fees has to be paid, not before that. Uh, we do not assist with airport pickup, uh, but there is a buddy system uh, at the university where the student can connect with the existing students. And, uh, you know, but we do offer uh, assistance in obtaining residence permit. Okay, so a university official will go with the new students to the residence permit office and he is going to guide them uh, on how to obtain the permit. Uh, I, Dipali, I do not know the answer to this question, but I can get back to you on this, whether a spouse visa is available or not. I think it's better you ask the embassy about this, because I don't think that anybody at the university will be knowing the answer to this question. Uh, sure, Harpreet. So, like, I'm always here for to help you guys, and I'm open to questions anytime. And uh, if you have any confusion, I would suggest you contact me, uh, you know, for any clarification. And uh, I'm going to get back to you on the questions that I wasn't able to answer right now. I'll be sending the answers to Harpreet, and, you know, she can pass on the details to you.
Thank you, Sukrit. We will be looking forward to receiving the answers. Sure. Thank you.